maybe we jumped uh, ahead too much. And uh, let's uh, let's start with this example, which we uh, sort of analyzed informally, and we sort of guessed the uh, the answer. Uh, but, but the answer was what the answer was, or the question was, uh, where does the uh, uh, vector field uh, uh, come from? And uh, if any, any, anywhere, and where means that the, is it the gradient of a, of a function? And they, we kind of thought that might might be because once we realized that the, the pattern of, of flow is is like a flowing factor as you move away from the origin uh, in both in the same direction. So so it seems like uh, the it simply will be a flow down a, a hill like this. So but let's do what we tried to do yesterday. That is just just analyze. Uh, uh, well, let's solve the problem uh, in a specific way. So um, the, the solve the problem is find the find find the function. So say this is z equal z equal uh, f of x y if uh, if any. So the the graph of a function of two variables at the surface, and we are aware to find it. So find. Uh, z equal f of x y such that, and here I want to use uh, uh, the, the the notation that we have used. In, I'm sorry, it's not going to be f. Uh, let's call it h, and in order to avoid uh, reusing letters, okay. So uh, such that uh, notation I'm going to be using is this uh, h prime is equal to. That's one. How about that? So we are talking about the derivative. Okay. So uh, the derivative of the function is uh, um, our function of two variables is uh, its gradient. So this this is just another notation. Okay. So we are looking for this function h that satisfies this property, and then at that point we we sort of unwrapping things and putting them in a, a, a for a more compact way to a more expanded way in the way that we can connect with solve. And so in the answer is, uh, and then we replace the gradient with what it is, it's two, two partial derivatives. So dh dx dh dy is the same equation, is equal to xy. So uh, in other words, what we're looking at right now is uh, um, before we solve the problem, we, we realize that we're looking at <clears throat> uh, two vectors equal to each other. Okay, so it is, it is literally an equation, except except uh, both of these are vector fields, so so they are x y dependent. I, I admitted uh, variables here, but but certainly h is dependent on x and y. Therefore, their function derivatives are also functions of h uh, of x and y. So. Um, but the point being uh, here is that uh, the two vectors are equal to each other when. So equal to each other when, when what? When their components are equal. Their components uh, are equal. So that turns uh, a single vector equation into two numerical equations. It will, there still will be functions. So they will be uh, dependent on x and y. But uh, uh, so I break this equation to two. I have dh dx equal to x, and I have dh dy equal to y. So th these are our two two equations. Okay, and then and then we are uh, well. Uh, let, let's think about what, what we've got here. Um, uh, so we are we have a function of two variables uh, x y being differentiated with respect to x gives me x. So so and we need to find h. Okay, so so what we're doing? Well, in fact, probably, probably I could even uh, make that point earlier, uh, right here. What we're talking about is anti-differentiation. So we know the derivative, find the function. Okay, so we did that a lot in calculus one, and then in calculus two, a lot. We don't have, however, those techniques developed because these are vectors after all, and so we have to go uh, do it from scratch. And that's that's how we arrive to this two equations. Uh, but fortunately now these equations, these equations are familiar. They are just functions. They are, even though the functions are two variables, but the derivatives are partial. So there's only one derivative involved, and that's why we do we do what we did yesterday. We uh, anti-differentiate with respect to x. Okay. So so what do we get? We one take what? One half x squared plus c y. That's right. Uh, so uh, so we we do enter. Well, I probably uh, let me let me see, expand it. 
I'll let me expand it. So doing one by one uh, is, we might do it again later on. So uh, dh dx uh, is equal to x. Let me just use the notation that we have used. So I integrate both sides by, uh, with respect to x. So I have h of x, y equal to, uh, this time I, I use variables so to, to make that point, uh, integral and derivative x dx. Right, so differentiation with, with respect to x, so we, we do integration with respect to x as well, and that's how we got x squared over 2, plus, and remember that is constant, the point we came up yesterday, that uh, uh, there are two variables, therefore the y will be here present because uh, it, is, it still depends on, it might, it might depend on y. Okay, so, um, because, uh, try to differentiate this, if you, if you are not, not sure, differentiate with respect to x, then natu naturally, c of y will disappear. So, so that is the, the as far as we can go when we have there are two. Uh, there is only one derivative. When there is one derivative available uh, uh, out of two available, then the, the how far we, we get is it, it is it is not not far. We, there is there is there is way more ambiguity than when we have a, a function of one variable. So, well, fortunately, we have the other derivative too. So the answer is y. The the, the derivative is y. So once again, I differentiate. The end result should be naturally the same function. And I differentiate y dy, and I have y squared over 2 plus some k, that, that letter doesn't matter what it is, um, and um, uh, I have k of, k of x. Okay, so it is the same function, and uh, so I have to make it specific, so at this point it's not, it's not, so I have uh, then uh, taken all together, h of x, y is equal to x squared over 2 plus c of y, and it is also equal to y squared over 2 plus k of x. Okay, so, um, um, well, you can already guess the answer. Can you guess the answer? It's, uh, what, one half um, x, x squared plus y squared. That, that, uh, um, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the uh, so that that is the answer plus plus c, uh, but uh, uh, it would really uh, it would be prudent to uh, to make sure that we didn't miss anything. Just uh, oh, with added differentiation, but how do we know that there is none? And we really didn't. I don't, I don't think it ever came up uh, hmm, uh, that there is there is a property of uh, of uh, antiderivatives uh, which is identical to. Uh, the property of uh, antiderivatives in uh, in calculus one numerical functions uh, to what's the difference between two antiderivatives? Of the same function in calculus one. The difference between two antiderivatives. They can only differ by a constant. Uh, the difference is a constant, right? So it actually applies equally equally well here. Okay, so in, in spite of the extra ambiguity, once we put together, uh, it, it is still the same, right? So it is almost identical. The, uh, in calculus one, the difference between two uh, antiderivatives was they were curved and they were shifted vertically, and now we have surfaces. There is really no big difference, and so we are moving uh, along, up and down along the z-axis, producing more and more antiderivatives. Okay, so uh, but but if you want to be careful, uh, and, and what is the what is the algebra that gets us to the correct answer? In the uh, there is nothing uh, uh, here uh, that that suggests. I mean, it is very suggestive of what it is. Uh, by you just combine the uh, terms that depend on x, and and then combine terms that depend, that depend on y. Okay, and then uh, kind of intuitively clear that one should not be mixed with the other, other than a constant. Okay, so and that 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 way you can conclude that. Uh, k of x is x squared over 2, and c of y is y squared over 2. Is there a more specific way, a uh, more, more rigorous way, uh, than just the, the such and such a guess, uh, or grouping things? Um, well, by the way, there is nothing wrong with grouping uh, like, like the way I did, um, and, and then concluding that uh, h is equal to x squared over 2 plus c squared, y squared over 2 plus c uh, constant. It is okay, but then, then how do you know that you found all? Then you have to quote all here because uh, because uh, of that theory that they all differ by constant so if you found one you found all just like in calculus one 
Okay, so, uh, but, but still, uh, that is if you can guess, then, then you're fine. Uh, but, uh, um, but how to find it is a more complex situation. And the answer is uh, there is really no easy way, uh, but usually we, we, uh, uh, we plug in, um, uh, you can try simply to plug in different values. So for example, if I plug in x equals zero, uh, you know, these two equations, uh, the, this equation, these two things are equal to each other, um, for every single value of x and every single value of y and all combinations of x and y. So I, for example, I could plug in x equals 0 and then I discover that c of y is equal to y squared over 2 plus k of 0. Okay, so that, that what does it tell me? Uh, that, uh, what does it tell me? Well, the k of 0 is a constant, right? So that, that pretty much does it. I plug in y equals 0 just for completeness sake and I have uh, k of x is equal to uh, x squared over 2 plus c of, of 0. And so we need see that both c and k, these two functions of x and y respectively, are y and x respectively, uh, are nothing but uh, uh, this. So it's uh, y squared over 2 plus constant. And the other one is x squared over 2 plus constant. So, so then, uh, then what is my function h if not the sum of those plus constant? So h of x, y then is equal to x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 plus constant. So that's how we discover the, the right to the same conclusion as, as uh, uh, relying on that theorem, which I do not believe has, has a particular name of it, but uh, uh, you might the in calculus one it's that analogy is is uh, uh, what is it it's it's like two uh, two runners running at exactly the same even though variable speed and they are holding a, like a, uh, a rope between them and the rope never breaks or hangs okay so uh, so that that's the theorem in dimension two naturally it's, it doesn't apply anymore but you can think about if you think about it as a as a, a terrain then. Uh, um, so what we're saying here is, uh, well, there are extra conditions here, but uh, it's like uh, the slopes are all the same in all directions, and we conclude that uh, uh, the uh, the, uh, that the 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 two terrains are different only by constant. Uh, differentiability uh, is required. That's what I meant to say here. So under differentiability conditions, then we can find all antiderivatives. Uh, in this uh, in the, of this function, okay, uh, in this manner, okay. So the answer is then yes. Uh, the there is a, the gradient derivative of which is is our uh, vector field. Uh, it is uh, 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 the graph of this is the uh, a paraboloid of revolution. And if you want to connect the two together in a really tightly, then you turn that up. Uh, that uh, uh, hyperbola, uh, parabola of revolution turned upside down and uh, allow a, a water flow on that surface. Okay? So we, we have that, that picture. So that, that picture is pretty, uh, pretty revealing. Um, well, let me make, make, make more pictures, more, more arrows here, so they're shorter because we're, we're moving slower as we are uh, closer to the origin. And, and I'm not talking about, you know, some particular art particle that starts and then starts to accelerate down. Every, we, have, we have particle of every location. Water is covering, fully covering, uh, covering the, uh, uh, the, the surface and it's moving. And then you just d d put, put some kind of measuring device and measure this direction and the magnitude of the speed of the velocity and the, you end up with these arrows. Uh, however now, uh, where does the picture come from? You look at, at it from, from above. So you're looking at, uh, looking at the, the graph of the, uh, of the paraboloid from above and then you see what you see. You see this graph of uh, a vector field. So the vector field is visible of all, all those things. Okay, so uh, so that works out fine. The um, uh, the uh, when the uh, so there is such a gradient, the, there is a word for it. It is called the the potential. So h is the potential or potential function of of the vector field. Of uh, x y. Okay, and then. Uh, uh, 
I guess you can interpret this from the physics point of view uh, like there is a force. There is a force behind it uh, of a particular kind uh, also. Uh, It has something to do with the well, the uh, so the the altitude. It's like potential energy. That, that's the, that's the word potential. That's the connection to uh, to physics. Um, okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll just leave it here. Uh, so we can uh, now from now on we can at least attempt uh, to find the gradient for the function trying to the anti differentiation in this manner. Okay. Then if we find then they're good and then sometimes this is uh, we we or maybe not and that's what the where we are uh, with the other example, where the, uh, there is a rotational, very different pattern of, of behavior. Uh, you have a rotational uh, uh, motion, uh, in fact, so, so that there, you would think it is abrupt, but actually, for example, from, from this point, uh, the, the, where does it go? Uh, from a point, well, let me pick this one, uh, from 0 to 1, uh, from the point 0, 1, 0, 1, okay, that point over here, uh, where I'm moving, I move it, uh, hold on, where's my, oh, here's my formula, okay. Uh, I will be moving to where, uh, uh, so one more point, V of 0, 1 is uh, negative 1, 0. Uh, hold on a second, uh, 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 that, that, that's not, uh, this point is uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay. Uh, so I'm looking at this point over here, and I am uh, interested in, so I, I plotted a few because it was so quick, uh, so we got, got a bunch of points uh, really quickly, uh, but uh, I picked one, so off, off uh, the axes, these are all uh, eight points, or nine, uh, were uh, on the, how many points? Nine points, uh, they were all on the axis, so if I pick one off the axis, then I pick point one, one, okay, and then it will be negative one, one. Negative one one right. So that's the direction of the of the of the vector field, and this is what it what it looks like like this. Okay, and then they all will be like this. Okay, that that suggests uh, that that actually uh, picture is slightly misleading. Um, why is it misleading? Because it's, if you look at it, it's, it suggests that it's a spiral. If you try to follow these arrows you will be spiraling out away from the origin, right? You, you can see uh, it, the, that, that it is a, an almost an accident, uh, by accident, but the, uh, those two consecutive, uh, or three consecutive arrows are taking you away from the origin. So if you approximate in the manner that we did uh, yesterday uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with Excel, uh, the, you will end up with uh, a spiral, spiral that uh, uh, moves away from the origin. Even though the answer is we, not the answer, but rather uh, if you go to, we, which we're not gonna, uh, differential equation, you solve it, it will give you circles. And then you can guess why, and not, not why, but rather uh, it, is, it is circular. We can, we can certainly analyze that and, and, and discover that all the tangents, all the tangents, that, that's certainly worthwhile uh, looking at, we will do it next. Uh, all the tangents are in fact perpendicular to the radial, to, to the, uh, to the uh, radius uh, or, or the edge that connects the point to, to the origin like this. So if this is the origin and this is my point, which way does the uh, uh, the uh, vector field point? Perpendicular. So if, if, the, if the direction is always perpendicular to, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the direction towards the origin, it is, it is rotation. It is rotation. We, we had already a little bit of that when we talked about uh, parametric curves. So if you want to move along with a parametric curve along those uh, uh, vector, uh, uh, those arrows, you will be rotated. Okay. Uh, uh, so so sorry about that. Then the, the point being that uh, the, the, the pictures might be misleading. Uh, this definitely misleading picture. Uh, so we, we have to resolve that, and so we will. Uh, but let's let's solve the problem uh, first. And the problem is is this. Uh, uh, the gradient. We, in fact, the, the name of it is, is I, I should mean, maybe combine these two. Uh, so H is a potential, and and in, in the meantime, uh, uh, and, and also say X Y is a gradient vector field. Okay. So the two little definitions. Uh, so the function. Uh, we know what the gradient is, and so vector field is the gra is a, a gradient vector field <coughs> if it is 
the gradient of some function here. If it is, then that function is called its potential. Okay, so, and then we started doing what we just did, uh, but now with a different function. So, uh, so my function is, uh, my, my, my vector field is negative y x, okay, over there. Uh, so I, once again, I break that equation over here uh, into, into two. I'm, I'm looking at one coordinate at a time, x's, um, uh, uh, separate from y's. And then the, uh, now this time, unlike the last example, the, the x and the y are intermixed. And when I integrate uh, with respect to x, I'm integrating negative one, right, over there. And so I end up with negative x1, while uh, with this, the other one, I uh, integrate uh, x with respect to y and end up with x, y. And the difference of signs, you can guess, is probably important. Okay, and then and then we proceed in the same fashion. So we don't know the answer. We don't know the answer, even we, we, we guessed it uh, yesterday, uh, what the answer is. Uh, but uh, we, we, we proceed as if uh, nothing is, is we, we do not anticipate any, any problem. And so what do we do? We try to find at this stage. So at this stage is, uh, first of all, was, uh, uh, so find, uh, find f, so I'm using f here. Oh, it's okay. So find f uh, with its two, uh, 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 no, just, just a function of two variables. Okay, then uh, over here, once we reach this point over here, I say find c and k, those two functions of x and y. So I, I, I what do I do? I set them equal to each other. Um, um, the, it's the same function f, so f of x, y is equal to negative x, y plus c of y and equal to x, y, k of x, okay? And then once again, we could try to do what I just did last time, and that was uh, uh, try to uh, um, group them, okay? So group them uh, based on what they are, and, uh, and, the, and the, the, the trouble is they are not grouping well. So last time I grouped uh, x's, separate functions of x separate and functions of y separate see the, the, the grouping and here that's not going to work in fact we have uh, we have uh, terms that contain both x and y and they are kind of different okay we'll look at it there uh, there's x y there's negative x y they're never equal to each other unless x y is equal to zero x or y is equal to zero and so if we try to group them together then what, which is I did over, what I did over here, then we realize that whatever is on the, on the, on the right uh, we, we have to depend on x and y uh, simultaneously. Okay, and then, uh, so that, that certainly should be a suspicion, uh, cause some suspicion, but really it is just, just a, a fail, failing to group things doesn't really prove anything. So instead, instead, once again, we pursue uh, substitution, okay, to see what's what's going on. And uh, and I substitute x equals zero. I end up with uh, this equation: c y minus k of zero is equal to zero. I substitute y equal to zero. I have c of zero uh, minus k of x equal to zero. The conclusion then, similarly to what we just did last time uh, in the previous example, is is to conclude that in fact uh, c of y does not depend on y. It is it is a constant. So let me. Uh, it's a constant. That's what I have over here. So uh, c of y is a constant. Period. Not just with respect to x. It is a constant. And similarly, I conclude that uh, k of x is two. Both of them are constants. Okay. And now we are getting to the punchline. We have two constants. So then, what we have here is negative x, y plus c, it does not depend on y anymore, is equal to x, y plus k. Okay, you see, you see the problem now? Negative 2x, y is equal to k minus c, and um, so what do I say here? Observing this. I mean, x and y are constant. <coughs> right, we, except they're not, right? So it is the x and y are independent variables, so, so this is impossible. Uh, because x and y are, are variables, independent variables, and so I should be, I, I'm able to vary the left hand side and I cannot vary the right hand side. So that is a, a, appropriately named, it's called a, a, a contradiction. Whenever you arrive to a contradiction, you go back and look at what is the assumption that you made that probably 
are a cause, uh, what, what was the starting point? And the starting point is right here. This is the assumption. This is the assumption that led to all, all the trouble. We assume that P is a gradient vector field, so it's the gradient of some function, and then we realize that, well, and then we arrive to a contradiction. Logical contradiction, which makes our, which proves what? So we made assumption, arrive to a contradiction, which would prove what? The assumption was wrong. Therefore, the assumption was wrong. So, in other words, the assumption being that there, there is a, there is no such thing. Well, so, so then, uh, what is negative one x is not a gradient vector field. You can say it does not have an antiderivative. So the last example, it did have, and this one does not. And, and if you want to practically think about what, what it means, it means that there is no surface. There is no surface, I know, many hills or one hill or uh, settle point between minimum maximum points, whatever that uh, you try to think of. Uh, there is no such surface that, uh, that would, uh, when you know, put water up, a drip of water on it will produce a pattern of, of velocities that is rotational, like this. Okay. Uh, so that's a uh, wow, that that's uh, that's a conclusion that is uh, uh, not not entirely obvious. Even though we talked about that well yesterday, if uh, if we can demonstrate that we do have, we talk about rotations, then uh, uh, we uh, you know it, it means that you would you would come back. You were supposed to climb the the mountain. You're supposed to climb the mountain along these. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, arrows, and if you come back, then it's impossible for you to uh, to climb. You you haven't been climbing, so you, you make a full circle. It's like a it's like a, you were you were, it's like a spiral, which which actually proves only one thing that your function f is not continuous, right? So you make a full circle, you arrive to the same location, but at a different altitude. It's just a spiral, but for as far as function f is concerned, it is not continuous anymore because there that, that's a gap right there. Okay, so. So uh, like uh, like uh, like this, starting with point X and start climbing, and then we do climb. Doesn't matter how little we have have climbed a little bit up, and uh, but the burst horizontally uh, we are at the same location. So so uh, that's discontinuity. Discontinu the only thing that remains is really to demonstrate that uh, uh, to to make that point to demonstrate that indeed we do have circles. How do we know that circles? It's really uncomplicated. Uh, it is uh, with all the uh, vector cal calculus, with vector algebra rather, uh, that we have, uh, we can demonstrate. It. So uh, reason for this conclusion, algebraic conclusion, if you want to explain it in addition to algebra, you want to explain it with uh, some geometry. And uh, uh, so vector, say, v as a matter of fact, is uh, uh, negative one x at, located at the point x1, okay? So, uh, um, uh, at x, y, or, so vector, vector, located, located, uh, located at point x, y, or at the end of vector x, y. It doesn't really matter that it is. But to the point, we are comparing these two. So this is the origin. This is my vector xy, xy. And then it is compared to vector uh, this one, v, which is negative yx. OK, so how do we demonstrate that they are perpendicular to vectors? What do we do with them? Was observed that the dot product is zero. So we compute the dot product, and indeed you have uh, x y dot negative y x is equal to negative x y plus y x, and it is equal to zero. So indeed, uh, the uh, uh, so they are perpendicular.
Okay, uh, it is still not entirely uh, uh, justified yet. Uh, the idea is will be the only uh, the only um, uh, the only possibility when you discover something like that. The only possibility is that you're going to make a full circle. You actually have to solve this differential equation to demonstrate that you're not just approximately arrived to the same location because it seems to be turning back and back and back, uh, but that we solve the equation. Fortunately, in this particular case, it's it's really uncomplicated. Uh, because, uh, well, the, the, the setting is entirely familiar and uh, we can just guess what that rotation, what that rotation is. So, uh, the curve that follows uh, the arrows, so we have a bunch of arrows, spread it out, and then we, we can just point them out. Uh, say, uh, P of T is going back to like October, and what is the uh, parameter curve of uh, circular motion? Cosine t sine t. Cosine t sine t. And, uh, uh, and then uh, a p prime of t is equal to uh, negative sine t cosine t. And then you can, ju you can just verify that indeed the uh, uh, u, these are, so well, let's put it this way, when we are at this location, the direction is is that okay? So that would be if you were to put it in one single sentence, that's how I would put it. So the parameter curve is moving cosine sine t. So we're we at this location, which is a point on the plane, uh, and then we we match it with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, we match its its velocity at that particular time, match with the vector at that particular location. Okay, so vector field gives us velocity at locations, while the parameter curves naturally they only give us uh, the velocity at particular time. So as you can see, it depends on t. Up until this point, there was no t. Why? Because we're not talking about parameter curves; they are only um, no more than than, uh, than tools, and they become really prominent only in a, in a differential equation uh, environment. So we were just looking at at, at, at vector fields. Um, so, so that's why it's, if you can explain it, uh, but fully you, you, you probably have to look at the vector field as a differential equation. Uh, uh, for our, for the time being, this this is a, a perfectly all right way to, to demonstrate that this is not uh, a gradient vector field. Okay, uh, so let's um, let's let's uh, expand a little. Uh, so with these two examples, so we see what can happen in dimension two, but really dimension two never we we never stick to one particular dimension. So uh, so let's see that there is a, once again a hierarchy, and we have one to three. So dimension one. Uh, well, so then n is equal to one, and our uh, we are pretty much in simply in the environment of uh, of parametric. Uh, I'm sorry of of. Um, uh, numerical functions, uh, but we can still take our our x-axis, where that would be actually uh, well the y-axis, but well let's say it's the x-axis, and uh, and then what is the vector field? What does the vector field look so, uh, look like? It simply has it is a bunch of, of vectors, except they are all uh, have to be squeezed within within this one-dimensional line, so they will, will look like this. Uh, possibly going that way, this way. Uh, if you want continuity, they usually do not turn around instantly. Uh, so it is a vector field. It's still a function. So for each location, there is there is a there is a vector which is in one dimensional situation. These are uh, these are just numbers. So uh, so in other words, v of x a number, but also a vector, is attached. To x, so we never visualize functions this way. Okay, so there in calculus one there was only one way to visualize a function of one variable, and that is the graph. So you have uh, like this. Okay, this is x and this is y. And then well, well alternative, uh, the advantage is well certainly I want to have a hierarchy, but also think about that this is could be you can think of it as as like a pipe, a pipe, and arrow once again indicate the direction of of, of liquid flowing. In which direction? How fast? Okay, so so that's just a different way to visualize, and it's 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 one dimensional visualization of uh, of something that we usually visualize with uh, with a graph in, in on the plane. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so so once again, what we're talking about here is x over here, and then if I find y, y, like this, then this is my y, this is my y, and I just call it a vector, and then I take that vector and it and attach it over here. So this is my x, and this is, and this is f of x. Okay, so this is f of x, right? So. Graph of a function for each value of x, I compute f of x, which gives me a number, but then I treat it not as a, as a number, but treat it as a vector, and I, I, it, which it simply means that I make it in, in an arrow rather than a, a, just a, a neutral, I make it an arrow, and then take that arrow and attach it over there to x. See over there, x, f of x attached to it. Well, that, that's all there is. Just a different way to visualize uh, functions of one variable as well as a different way to uh, to interpret them. So, like I said, a flow through a pipe. Okay. In the meantime, we are more uh, in dimension two. We are more comfortable with um, uh, which we are more comfortable with, and that if we're talking about on the plane, we have those arrows, um, and uh, uh, so it's d of x y is equal to uh, some two functions, say f of x y, g of x y. Remember that that's the how uh, uh, two-dimensional vector fields are, are created, two input variables, two output variables uh, as numbers, but uh, really you can uh, certainly do more than that. And this is either a flow on the a horizontal plane with, for some reason, uh, 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 particles move faster in some, some location than not, or, and then that probably is the best way to explain it, because because that example that we had when we flow is, is down the uh, a surface is an exception, well not an exception, but it is not to happen every time. So, so when uh, it is, it is, might happen, but it doesn't have to happen. So not every vector field is a gradient vector field, so we have to limit ourselves to uh, this interpretation. So it's a flat one, a flat surface, water is moving everywhere in these directions in, in, with this magnitude, and, uh, uh, and why, we don't know. So, so there's why, there, why is not an issue here, because we, we, uh, this is just the losses. We're observing what's happening, and then if there is some kind of physics behind it, some kind of physics, uh, then uh, that, that is not our concern right now. And then, and then the exact same thing happens with uh, uh, dimension three, except now, well, if you can imagine, it's, it's getting harder and harder to, to visualize. So our vectors will be hanging in the, in the so the whole space is uh, filled with, with vectors like this. Uh, so if this might be better to think of as water, uh, this is better to think of as air. Okay, so once again, there's a wind and there's a motion of, 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 of the wind through the air, and if you, there's a way to, uh, to detect uh, uh, the loss of uh, a particle at a particular location, so there is no time dependence, remember that. Uh, it, is, we, it is the uh, velocities uh, depend on the location. Different location, different, different velocity, but there is no uh, progress uh, in time. Uh, when the time comes in, when we try to find one particular particle and find out how it moves through this. Uh, there is, a, for 3Ds, a, I, I cannot use Excel to visualize it, but there is a, uh, so my Mathematica does it easily. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly show you uh, uh, a little picture. What really? Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, so that's what Mathematica produces. Uh, you, if you can read what's at the top, uh, it is the uh, the command which says vector plot 3D x y z. What's x y z? It is simply the uh, three dimensional vector field with components x y and z. So so two dimensional vector field is made of, of two functions. Three dimensional is made of uh, three functions. And for this particular case, I chose x y and z. And then the rest of it, uh, this just copy. Somewhere. Okay. So, um, so this is the actual vector field right here, and these are just the uh, this is the name, which happens to be Q. So limits for x is y and z. So between negative one and one for all and for all. Three. 
So for this particular one, f of x, y, z is uh, x, y, z, x, y, z. So the simplest one, and once again, we're observing this explosion. Okay, so, uh, so everything moves directly away from the origin, and as we move away, it moves faster. So the, the analogy is uh, identical to the one that we started with, except this one was two-dimensional, okay? The, the trouble with three-dimensional uh, vector fields is, even though everything is almost identical, uh, we are not in the position to have a visualization like this. So even if there is a gradient, uh, it is a gradient vector field, and there is a function of, of uh, that that gives us uh, the, this, uh, the gradient, which is that vector field, uh, it is a function of three variables, and we cannot speak of, of like like this. That's water flowing down some uh, some terrain. No, uh, well that, that's out of the question. Uh, even though, like I said, uh, 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 B is this one, X, Y, Z, is in fact uh, the gradient of, of what? Uh, you, you can probably guess, but uh, uh, X squared over 2 plus Y squared over 2 plus Z squared over 2. So a function which is pretty much uh, nothing but uh, us. So it changes spherically. Uh, so its, it's level surfaces will be spheres, concentric spheres. Uh, so whatever, if, if it helps at all. Um, so it is a gradient vector field, and the um, um, as you can see, the, it is a, uh, it is fairly easy to carry out the same exact computation as we did, except well, it's, it's not necessarily easier the way we did it over here. You can imagine that you have three variables. You have to uh, then do integration three times, and then instead of two equations, you have three, and so there might be some some issues with uh, with kind of computational um, uh, problems. Uh, but um, uh, we're not going to do a lot of that at this point. Uh, what I wanted to to talk a bit uh, about is the uh, is the vector notation. Uh, so that way we can progress to uh, dimension n and on if we just uh, uh, use what we have learned for a reason, and that is vector notation. So vector fields, vector notation. So you don't want to have x, y, z uh, forever. Uh, so then, um, in that case, one thing that is particularly convenient is is uh, uh, stop thinking about the uh, the input as um, as points, so a vector field, but rather vectors again. So input a vector in our end, and so is the output. Okay, so then I mean it's a zero. That is our my vector x y z, x y z being the that's that's the input. And then what I do is I attach a vector, whatever that is. Maybe in this particular case x minus y, z plus one, whatever. Uh, uh, that is my vector field which is attached to a to x y z. Okay, so uh, dimension doesn't matter. The the idea works out it works out in any dimension. Uh, the, but the, you realize once you want to start using vector notation, you realize that you can do uh, all kinds of algebra. So there's an algebra of vector fields. So uh, say v plus w, one vector field plus the other, or another vector field uh, produce a new vector field. So, so for example, we have, we have velocities. Uh, somebody be doing that project uh, when, uh, when the uh, cannon shooting and there is a wind. Right, uh, so that uh, that was your idea uh, to to add the wind into into consideration, which makes things complicated. But the reality is this: uh, so um, yeah, so uh, well, it's not exactly uh, exactly that. But imagine that you are you are uh, how what what would be an analogy of that? Uh, suppose you have a flow, you have a flow, maybe easier, maybe complicated over a river. Okay. And so it's a vector field V, and then there is also wind. Going in some direction, maybe easy or maybe with some variability as well. So, so and then you're interested in which way you're going to go when you take it into account simulta simultaneously. The current and the wind. Okay, so what do you do? You add them together. And you have a new vector field. Once again, assuming that uh, the variability is entirely location, in terms of location, not in time, but, uh, then you have a new vector field, and then uh, all the we have talked about is is uh, still possible. 
uh, on, the, uh, on the ideas of uh, where they come from. Uh, the second uh, issue, natural, the second operation on, on uh, vectors would be a scalar multiplication. So you can do this. Uh, that's also uncomplicated to see uh, 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 some, some real life uh, um, analogy uh, or instance of that. It is uh, uh, so, uh, so you have a flow and then it, it goes twice as fast. Okay? Or wind, it doubles. It goes in the same direction in every location, but now it's twice, twice as fast. Uh, anything, uh, let's let's take our uh, let's take our sp specific examples from uh, from today and yesterday and just have a, uh, have expressed them as, as vectors. So, for example, if we had x y in uh, yesterday, so one vector is v of v of u is equal to u. That would be okay. That would be number one example. So the input is the same as the output. And uh, so, what is, what kind of vector field is this? Can you say anything about the second field? The output is the same as the input, but remember, the, the, look at that picture over there on the right. This is u, and then you attach to the end of u, you attach u, u again. So this is the input. This is the output. Okay, so you find the location, but this time in the form of a vector, and then copy that vector and attach it to the end. Okay, so what's the what does the uh, vector field look like? It's, uh, it's like an explosion of the origin. It's it's once again that explosion we saw two of them, uh, including this one. That's a, that's an explosion. That's exactly it. I'm just I'm taking the same exact thing, but using uh, using the uh, vector notation. So so that will work in dimension one, two, or three, or any dimension. Uh, the other one is even simpler. It is the of u is equal to u naught constant. What does does that mean? So there is no variability on location. What does the vector field look like? So this is explosion. I, not, not explosion. I don't think I want to speak of explosion here. I mean, remember, it is, it is uh, in fact, uh, uh, more like a flow. Because explosion does not go faster as you move away from, from, the, from the origin. So I, uh, from the origin of the explosion. So, so it is not really an explosion, but I can, just can't think of a better way to describe it. So this is what we're talking about. And now, uh, when the graph is, uh, when the vector field is constant, what does, the, what does it look like? Of the river is current. Flow of the river, right. So, so we're a perfect flow of the river whenever a single location has the exact same vector. Uh, in fact, uh, let, let's take the first example and modify it slightly. What is this? So, take the first example and then divide it by the magnitude of the, that vector. You see the difference with that kind of explosion-like behavior? It would be like an explosion only with each vector being a constant magnitude. Okay, a constant magnitude. So once again, it's moving away from it, but at constant speed, which is actually makes it slightly more sound more like an explosion, right? Because uh, it does not accelerate as we move away uh, from the origin. Okay, so we'll do more examples. Next time. 